Okay, so you finally snagged a good deal on one of those OEM desktops that has the potential to transform into a Fortnite crushing gaming PC. The questions now become, which upgrades do you go with and how much money do you spend? Because you have to spend enough money for it to be worth it, but on the other end, you don't wanna spend too much money because that would be overkill and then you should've just bought a brand new PC. I'm gonna answer all those questions in today's video. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be comparing three different upgrade pads for a Dell Optiplex OEM desktop, $150, $200, and $300, to see which one is best for you. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC building or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's kick this thing off. The centerpiece for the video today is the Dell Optiplex 3010, which I personally found used on the Mercari app for just $100. It's rocking an i5-34, 70 clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and it came installed with a pretty slow 500 gigabyte hard drive. You certainly don't need this specific Dell Optiplex model, or any Optiplex for that matter. You just need a solid desktop OEM for around $100 to $150. Some things to shoot for are a good processor like an i3 or an i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, and bonus points go to something like an SSD or a bigger hard drive or anything like that. Once you have the OEM desktop in place, it's now time to determine which upgrade path you you should take and in today's video I have three options for you but I did make a separate video for all of these by the way all of those are linked down in the description the first option is the extremely budget $150 route which is probably about as cheap as you should go provided you paid $100 for the desktop in this $150 build I personally put in a GTX 650 that you can easily find on AliExpress for 30 bucks and also upgraded the power supply to an EVGA 430 the thing about this build is that it definitely doesn't need 430 watts of power but this specific GTX 650 requires a six pin power connector, so the upgrade was required. If you determine that your build doesn't need a PSU upgrade and you wanna leave it in there, be careful on this because power supplies in these OEM desktops usually aren't great, then you can spend this extra 20 bucks on a bit beefier of a graphics card or maybe an SSD. Moving on to how this $150 build will perform, here are the benchmarks that I personally got with my system. As you can see, the easier to run games, CSGO, Dota 2, and Fortnite are all at 1080p and medium, while the tougher to run games like PUBG and Far Cry Cry 5 are stuck in 720p in low settings. Far Cry 5 is on the borderline of playable with this system in my opinion, but still not bad for just 150 bucks. Okay, so next up is the $200 upgrade path, which in my opinion is the sweet spot, like I explained in the dedicated video that you can find up there. And in this build, I kept the power supply upgrade the same, but I also added a GTX 750 Ti to the mix and even a 120 gigabyte SSD. Once again, the power supply for this build isn't necessarily required, but because I always recommend upgrading the PSU and this specific GTX 750 Ti requires a six pin connector, I added it in there. This Asus GTX 750 Ti is a monster in terms of price to performance. Make sure you check out my dedicated video on the 750 Ti in 2018 if you're interested in that. And these are pretty easy to find these days for right around 50 bucks. The SSD upgrade also makes a world of a difference. Usually these old desktop OEM computers are packing a pretty slow and old hard drive at this point. So installing Windows in your most used games on a fresh SSD is night and day different. This specific model only cost me $20 off Newegg, so if you wanna go this route, just be patient and you'll eventually snipe a good deal like I did. Moving on to the performance of the $200 build, here are the benchmarks with the same five games that we tested earlier. The first three games got a bump up in settings and definitely a bump up in FPS. With PUBG, I could even get into the 1080p resolution, but not Far Cry 5. However, I'm very happy that every game was above that target 60 FPS mark. And finally, our last upgrade path is the three $300 version, and this is for people that don't want to gamble with used components and just want to go the easy route of buying new parts. In this build, we kept the SSD and the power supply from the previous build, but this time I added a brand new GTX 1050 Ti. GTX 1050 Ti's aren't terribly hard to find these days for right around 150 bucks if you're a little patient, and this is about as much money as I would personally spend in a GPU upgrade for an OEM desktop. Keep in mind that you could put a GTX 1060 
60 in there. I've seen in the comment section that some of you are doing that, but now you're flirting with the potential for a bottleneck. The 3470 that's in here could run with the 1060 pretty well. Just make sure you're not putting a 1060 in with like a core two quad or something. Here are the results for the $300 build with the GTX 1050 Ti. And as you can tell, we got some much better results than our previous two builds. All three of the easier to run games were at 1080p in high settings, while the tougher to run games could handle 1080p in medium. Keep in mind that if you don't like these 50-ish FPS marks, you could easily bump down the settings a little bit more for a smooth 60 FPS. So after seeing all three of these results, I do want to mention that I personally feel like the $200 build is the perfect sweet spot. Spending $300 on a desktop OEM is a little bit overkill in my opinion, and the $200 build is just a little bit more optimal. Also keep in mind that if you're thinking about upgrading one of these older OEM desktops, you certainly don't have to go with the exact parts that I mentioned, and in fact you probably shouldn't. Hustling for used PC components is completely different from one city to the next, especially from one country to another, so it really all comes down to what specific deals you can find in your area. The purpose of this video was simply to give you an idea on how much money you could be spending on your next used gaming PC. Well that wraps up my video all about upgrading those OEM desktops into a gaming PC. Feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, or those specific Optiplex videos that I talked about that are down in the description, and definitely hit that subscribe button because I have some very cool content coming soon about cooling your new gaming PC, which is a pretty good idea because the AC in my house is out now and it's pretty hot.